Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about when to get every economy upgrade in Age of Empires 2. This is going to be a very nice video, I hope, because I often get asked questions on when to get certain economy upgrades and I feel like there's not a single video out there that kind of explains it holistically. So hopefully this video is going to be the one that explains it forever. All right, starting things off, we're going to talk about the wood upgrades here. So obviously, double bid axe is the first that comes to mind. That's the wood upgrade in Feudal Age. And that one is definitely very important. You want to pick that up pretty much 99% of the time as soon as possible when you hit Feudal Age. You're not going to regret it because it pays back extremely fast within like a few minutes. Uh, and then obviously, it continues to profit you with more and more wood and faster gathering wood for the rest of the game. And it's quite a cheap upgrade. You definitely want to pick that up right when you hit Feudal Age. And then we got bow saw after that. That's also because it's a 20% extra gather rate for the wood choppers. It's once again, a very important upgrade once you get to the castle age. The reason why wood upgrades as well are very important early on is because wood is a very important resource to develop your base. It is useful for houses, different buildings, military production, military units, farms, all kinds of buildings. And so it is basically essential to developing your base and getting to the late stage. And so we want to heavily invest into our wood resources and wood gather rates. Lastly, we have two man saw. This only gives a 10% increase, but of course it's 10% faster considering you're already chopping much quicker than the base rate since you have double bit and bow saw. So it's still a decent boost. However, I would say that it's not the most important. It's pretty expensive at 300 food and 200 wood. So I feel like it's not the one you want to rush as soon as you get to Imperial Age. My recommendation is just to pick this up if the game is super late and you have some extra resources, you're 200 pop and you might as well pick it up because it is worth having for sure. And it's also good in maps where there's a lot of wood, something like arena something like black forest and then in that case prioritizing it can be a really good idea because you're not going to run out of wood you're going to have wood for the whole game and it's going to be beneficial to chop it faster definitely not as important but i would say getting it when you have 200 pop is a pretty good rule Next up, let's talk about the farm upgrades. Now we've got horse collar as the first one, and this is a very controversial upgrade. It's definitely the one that, you know, has, I guess the most discussion based around it. Maybe this and wheelbarrow. We'll talk about wheelbarrow a little later. Horse collar is interesting because it's obviously a really good upgrade to pick up if you can in a vacuum. If there's nothing going on, you pick up horse collar, it's pretty good. It makes your farms last longer. And it also lets you get heavy plow, which is the next upgrade in the farm in the mill. Yeah, there's nothing really wrong with it, aside from the fact that it takes a long time to pay off. Usually in the early game, your resources are very important to make military units and economy upgrades like the bit axe they pay back within a few minutes whereas horse collar pays back over time and it actually pays back in terms of wood it doesn't make you gather more food at all it just makes it so your farms have to be remade less time so it's saving you wood in the long term and the way i see it is that if you have the chance to get it without disrupting your early game military or early game setup then get it if you're doing a tight build order you want to attack you want to sacrifice a little bit of economy for a lot of early game pressure with the military then saving the resources, not getting horse collar is probably the right call. If you do delay it in Feudal Age, you don't get it right away in Feudal Age, then I'd recommend getting it on the way up to Castle Age because that's usually the time where you start to float a lot of resources and you don't need to really spend them on anything. You're kind of just stockpiling it. So early Castle Age or on the way up to Castle Age, horse collar is a perfect click or perfect time to, to pick that up. Next up, we got Heavy Plow. I recommend getting Heavy Plow when you're hard booming. So in maps like Arena or Regicide Fortress or even Black Forest in the pocket position in team games, for example, if you know you're going to go for a boom, I recommend you get Double Bit Axe Horse Collar in Feudal Age, as we discussed, on the way up to Castle Age, if you're going for like a fast castle boom. And then as soon as you get into the Castle Age, usually you can pick up Bowsaw and Heavy Plow. And this is pretty much the instance where Heavy Plow is very much useful. And it's when you get it in early Castle Age. Otherwise, if it's a more balanced game, you're fighting and it's like, you know, a lot of crossbows, knights and and you don't have the resources to pick up bow saw and heavy plow in early castle age simply get bow saw and we'll leave heavy plow till late castle age where you start to go like 4tc and have a lot of vills cooking or on the way up to imperial age if you go for a faster imp this will usually be around the time where you have like 80 to 100 vills that's usually when i like to get heavy plow because then you're seeding a lot of farms you're reseeding them you want to get the benefits of heavy plow and heavy plow gives you plus one gather rates per villager on your farms so it actually helps you gather more food even though it's a small amount that's still a little helpful it's also worth noting that on civs like poles and maybe slavs heavy plow is like pretty solid maybe sicilians as well so there are some civs that you want to prioritize it earlier but that's the kind of the general rule around that 
and then lastly for the farm we've got crop rotation this upgrade is almost useless it's only good in like super late games where you're sure it's gonna be like a five hour game or like a three hour game uh then okay crop rotation is pretty good to pick up so it's a hyper late game tech because it just takes forever to actually pay off so it's only good if it's a really long game or it's good if you're a sieve like poles again that gets benefit immediately from having crop rotation so that's pretty much how i see this tech it's not worth really thinking about too much Next up, we got the mining upgrades. These are really simple. For gold mining, you want to pick that up on the way up to Castledge. Most of the time, if you've got like eight bills on gold, it's definitely worth it. And then for the stone mining upgrade, you want to pick it up usually sometime around Castledge. But I would say pick up the stone mining upgrade when you're about to mine stone, when you have like four or five, maybe up to eight bills on stone. Picking it up is pretty useful because it lets you take the other stones on the map later on and gather them faster, which lets you make more castles and stuff like that. So I would say it's worth picking it up, but only when you start mining stone, usually around Castledge after you have three DCs, you start going for stone and that's fine. Other times you can get it is when you're going for a unique unit build and you're going to put like seven bills on the way up to Castledge onto stone. You can pick up the stone mining to get it, uh, the castle a little bit faster or make it a bit, bit more efficient. Uh, then for the gold shaft mining and the stone shaft mining, it just got actually a buff. The cost has been reduced. I recommend getting gold shaft mining. It's pretty good actually now. I recommend getting it in the mid game where you have like 30 or 40 on gold in like castle. You have like 80 vils, 90 vils. It's pretty useful because you get to like spam a lot of gold units and you're heavy on gold. So getting the gold faster is going to help you turbo the economy and get more military on the field. Or it's especially good in maps like Golden Pit and Gold Rush, Golden Swamp, where there's a lot of gold in the center. If you have the middle control, definitely get gold shaft mining. It's going to make you get the gold faster and be able to really abuse the middle control in those maps. For stone shaft mining, it's really not the most useful. I would say the only time you'd ever use this or get this tech is on those maps like Golden Pit where there's stone in the center or on maps like Mega Random where there's a lot of stone. But usually when there's only a little bit of stone like the standard resources on Arabia, it's not worth picking up stone shaft mining pretty much ever. So like I would say very situational on stone shaft mining. All right, now we're getting to the interesting part. Let's talk about wheelbarrow and handcart. After this, I've got caravan guilds. Those are like the market tax and then also coinage banking that I will briefly talk about. But for now, wheelbarrow and handcart. This is like the eco grades that just sparked the most confusion. So for wheelbarrow, the usual like math suggests that it's around like 16 farms, 16, 17, 18 farms around that number. And usually in game that translates to right before you click up the castleage, you can get wheelbarrow or in the early castleage, you can also get a wheelbarrow or like mid castleage, like we're around like 40 to 50 bills after you make three TCs within a couple minutes, you definitely have to get wheelbarrow. That's kind of like my recommendation. So either right before you pick up the castleage or right before you really start to turbo your economy in castleage, just pick up wheelbarrow because it's a very efficient technology and it's also not the most expensive. It just takes a lot of time from the town center. Now, next up, we've got handcart. Now, this is actually going to be a bit of a shock to you, but I believe handcart is completely overpowered. It's the best economy upgrade in the game, but a lot of players, especially the pro players, were kind of sleeping on it for the longest time, myself included. You'll still see games where it's like 140 bills late game. It's a pro match. It's in a tournament and pros are just not getting handcart. And that's like a monumental mistake. Like that's unacceptable. And uh, yeah, it's a really big deal. So I would say handcart should be picked up around like 60 to 70 bills. Literally, as soon as you can afford it in castleage and you're, if you get it, you're not going to die immediately. I would get a hand card. It's just, it's that useful. It's that good. There are civs as well, like Vietnamese that get like a big discount on hand card. So like with those civs, it's a freebie. Like you have to pick it up. But yeah, generally around like 60 to 70 bills, hand card is great. If you can't get it in castleage, it's a really intense castleage. There's a lot of fighting. You, you don't have a single resource to spare. Then okay, picking up hand card on the way up to Imperial Age is not a bad choice as well. But again, don't delay it till you have like 140 bills. It's so bad. You're wasting your resources. You can get a lot more resources a lot faster especially with the farming if you pick up handcart early or on time and then real quick we'll talk about caravan and guilds caravan is the upgrade that boosts your trade it's simple if you're trading get this as soon as possible not only does it make your trade cards move faster so that you're able to like make more trips but it also prevents them from getting raided by the enemy because they move faster so you can run away from raids a lot quicker so whether it's team game or 1v1 if you're caught trading then definitely get caravan early if you watch my videos you'll know that sometimes i'll trade in a 1v1 it just happens Next up, we got guilds from the market. This is actually a really bad upgrade in my opinion. I'd only get it in super late game. If the game's gonna last like literally three hours or two hours, then okay, getting guilds is fine. But if you're just planning on playing a standard game that usually lasts like an hour, you're like looking to push, then going for guilds is really not the best choice because it's pretty expensive. It costs gold and I think there's better choices. And also you can use the market just fine. It's It goes in late game, it goes from 100 wood selling for 14 gold to 100 wood selling for 17 gold. So unless you're really selling a lot of wood, that three 
legal difference is not going to change a whole lot. And same thing for wood and food. So I'd only get it in the hyper late games. And then lastly, coinage and banking. Those are the upgrades that help slinging or passing resources to an ally. Only get these upgrades if you're dedicated to slinging resources or in the super late game where you're, you've got a ton of resources from trade. One of your allies might be weak and you're trying to give him resources to get him back in the game. Then getting coinage and banking is really important so that you don't lose any resources in those transactions. So if you're the really strong one in the team game, you've got like 200 pop, full running trade. These upgrades are pretty cheap. You pick them up and then you start sending resources to your ally at a zero fee so no resources get lost and it's perfect uh, but yeah if you just want to send like 100 food 200 food in the mid game or even like 500 stones to your ally gets a castle don't really bother with these upgrades it's not worth it for like the small amounts all right that's gonna do it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something and let me know what video you guys want to see next week or just next sunday uh, in the comments below it's usually um, sunday is my educational uh, content day so if you want to have any questions that you want to ask let me know there also if you want to support me further check me out on patreon link in the description thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time Bye bye